Alright guys, so I'm going to be bringing you a super tank shield build that has an infinite ballistic shield with nearly infinite heals. Uh, and it's extremely efficient and fun to play and allows you to tank for your entire squad. Um, basically becoming invulnerable uh, and providing support, utility, heals to them frequently. Uh, as well as positional advantages, etc. So there's a lot going on with this build. It's finally something that's actually viable. I've been trying to run a variation of this build since probably 1.2. Uh, but it never really worked, and now it finally does, and it's something that's really cool to see. So the first thing to know is I'm using three pieces of high-end gear, as well as three pieces of tactician gear. Now, I'm going to talk about the tack first, then I'll talk about the three high-ends and why specifically you need these three in order for the build to work. Then I'll talk about my primary weapon, which is not actually either of these two. It's going to be my pistol, why I have the certain talents that I do, how they work with the skills, and then why I think it actually is such an efficient tanking build. So to start off with, you have three-piece tack. Now, some people may say that you want to run four-piece tack, but I have a specific reason for not running that. Uh, and the most important are the 10% skill haste and the 10% skill power. This is the big one right here. The three-piece bonus of 10% skill power is the most important. Uh, for the holster, I'm going to have pistol damage on my major attribute slot, not armor, because the bulk of damage I'm going to be soaking from the front with my ballistic shield anyways, so I don't actually have to be running armor there. I'm not going to be taking direct damage. Uh, and then I have, I would prefer high 1200s across the board, um, but I have a decent rolled holster that has high enough attributes to remain competitive. However, someone that's truly min-maxing is going to aim for about 1250 in every category. Uh, I do not actually have that. I haven't achieved that just yet. Moving on to my knee pads, these are electronics knee pads. Uh, it's important to have at least two pieces of electronics gear because you're going to be activating a certain set of talents across the board. Uh, and then in the major attribute slot, I do have armor. Uh, that's because this is a significant chunk and there's nothing else that you can roll on knee pads in particular that's better. Uh, the armor could be rolled for something like critical hit damage uh, since you will be soaking most of the damage with your ballistic shield. Uh, but armor is going to work and is very, very essential if you do get flanked in some situations. You need to be able to tank at least some damage from the sides without being a total glass cannon, otherwise the build wouldn't function properly. Moving on to my mask, I have a high rolled stamina mask with critical hit chance. That's important from a DPS standpoint. This build is going to have relevant DPS with your pistol. Uh, it actually is going to be able to kill enemies almost as fast as a dedicated DPS build while absorbing tremendous amounts of damage from the front and also healing at an absurd rate. Uh, so that's very important to note. The 3.5% critical hit chance there is quite valuable. Uh, for the resistances, it doesn't really matter because this, uh, the shield will actually be blocking most of the negative status effects that you're going to be uh, having that are incoming from whether it's enemy agents or enemy NPCs. Uh, you can actually block fire, etc. And it's very, very efficient. So now talking about my three pieces of high-end gear. These are very important to the build. I'm going to start with my gloves. I'm running the uh, Savage. I meant to switch these out to the Decisive Gloves. Here we go. So Decisive is going to be the main talent that you run. Uh, headshots with the sidearm deal 35% more damage. Since you're only going to be using a sidearm and only aiming for the head due to a variety of other reasons, this is going to be very, very efficient. On the gloves, since they are you know, firearms gloves and we do want the right major attributes, we have pistol damage, that's very important. Then we have critical hit damage and damage to elites. I would prefer critical hit chance instead of damage to elites, but from a PvE standpoint, that's actually much more effective. If you are going to be using a build like this specifically to tank for your teammates in incursions or something like that, then you do want damage to elites over critical hit chance. But as soon as you go into the dark zone, you're going to want critical hit chance over damage to elites or anything else uh, because that's the most valuable. So I prefer that from a PvP standpoint, but from a PvE standpoint, damage to elites definitely does not hurt at all. Moving on to my backpack, this is very important as well, resourceful. Uh, this really hasn't seen play up until now. As far as I know, there's not many builds that utilize this, but this build is extremely fun to have it, and you'll see why when I actually kick it over to the gameplay. All healing applied to you is also applied to your skill objects. That means that you can personally heal your shield as you go along, and with the frequency of heals, which I'll talk about in a second, um, it means an indefinite, invulnerable shield that is probably never going to go down at any point. Uh, for the major attributes, instead of armor, I've actually rolled Signature Ability Resource Gain. That coupled with a few of my mods, which I'll talk about in a second, as you can see here I have a Prototype Stamina mod with 3% Signature Ability Resource Gain, uh, will make it so that I can recharge my signature very, very quickly. I can be using my Tack Link, I can be using my Survivor Link, or I can be using my Medical Wing Signature um, very, very frequently, actually more frequently than any of my teammates. Which means if I am going for a dedicated healer build here, I can use the medical wing signature and revive them uh, all the time, pretty much on the fly whenever they need it. If I am going for an offensive build, I can use tack link and dish tons of damage very quickly. Even in PvP, I can start to drop people just as fast, if not faster, than dedicated DPS builds uh, while still having a wall in front of me that is nigh impenetrable. 
Uh, it's very, very cool. And overall, it's something you need to run in the backpack slot. Now for the minor attributes, burn resistance is nice, but again, you're not really gonna need it for any specific reason. If you're going into PVP, I would recommend burn or shock resistance. Now I'm gonna talk about my chest piece before I get into the mods. Uh, I'm running the Vigorous chest piece, and this is a electronics rolled uh, chest. So Vigorous is very important for this because the mitigation applied from booster shot is gonna keep you alive longer. The most important thing is the damage you get from booster shot, which allows you to then have even higher pistol damage on your secondary while aiming for the head and proccing a whole bunch of different uh, you know, secondary mechanics. Uh, but Vigorous is very important to run. However, if you do not want to run Vigorous, you can run any other chess piece uh, that, that feels right for you. You can run Reckless if you'd like to while blocking incoming damage from the front. And if you have the Larray Barrett chess piece, uh, I think it would be a very solid bet with this build. However, it's exceedingly rare and I don't have it to test for you guys on the PTS right now. However, in the live game, I will grind, uh, I will grind very hard for that and try and get a lot of builds revolving around that mechanic. That being said, the major attributes are very important as well. Protection from elites is good from a PVE standpoint, but anytime you're gonna be entering PVP, you're gonna to wanna to switch that up for something like flat health or EDR. And then armor is very, very important on the chest piece. There's nothing else that's as valuable in the major attribute slot on chest. Uh, and then minor attributes, ammo capacity, that's a quality of life thing, uh, that's important as well. So now to talk about all my different mods, I have stamina mods with armor in pretty much every single slot, except for just a couple. So stamina with armor in both of these slots here. Then in the mask, I have a stamina with skill haste, uh, which is, it's not necessarily critical. You can go for something like stamina armor if you wanna be you know more tanky and have higher toughness. Uh, but skill haste does help with getting your ballistic shield back if it does end up going down or glitching or whatever. Uh, and then also getting your heal back if you aren't able to land your headshots. And then moving on to my pads, I have a stamina mod with skill haste again. For the performance mods, I have all Ballistic Shield damage or Ballistic Shield health. However, there are some better alternatives. If you can get something like Ballistic Shield uh, damage resilience, that's very good as well. There's a lot of prototype performance mods that can augment this build in a really, really sweet way. So mix and match with those and make sure that you have four of them that are augmenting the shield in particular because that's more valuable than augmenting your heal. Since you are going to be running a heal and a shield, and that's kind of built into the build itself, uh, you're not going to be using any other type of skill mods. Uh, and if you do augment your heal, it's kind of a waste because you're healing for so much so frequently based on your skill power and based on cool headed, which I'll talk about in a second, it's not going to be that valuable. Moving on to my backpack, I have signature ability resource gain, the stamina mod, I already addressed that. And then I have ballistic shield health and ballistic shield damage. Uh, just a mixture of both. And then in my holster here, I have ballistic shield damage resilience. That's what I advise would advise running in every single category. Uh, that's very, very helpful. So now we're gonna talk about my weapon and why this is so important to the build overall. So we're gonna be using a 93R, which is a machine pistol that has three round burst and the highest RPM of any gun in the game. I previously did a video covering this gun and saying why it was godlike. And this is one demonstration, just one of many mechanical interactions and proof of why this gun is so good. The magazine is competitive, the damage is low, but the RPM is just so, so high, it can't be ignored. Now for the two talents, these are essential to the build. Expert, you want to leave on the gun because 100% more damage when targets are below 30% health is actually a huge deal. That means a third of the time in PvP, um, if they do go too low, you're gonna be doing 100% increased damage and actually dealing as much, if not more damage than pretty much any other gun in the game uh, at a faster rate because you are gonna be trying to land headshots and that 100% damage is a big deal on top of things like booster shot, uh, which further augments your damage. Cool headed in the second slot is very, very critical here. Performing a headshot reduces all skill cooldowns by 5%. So what Massive has done is they removed cool headed from fully automatic weapons like the Caduceus, because what it allowed you to do was instantly recharge your heals or your skills in general, um, every time you were landing headshots. You could just land a few headshots very quickly, rapid succession, recharge your heal or your other skill, and then use it again. Well, what did they do? They instituted a pistol that can still roll cool-headed and has even higher RPM than the Caduceus ever even could have dreamt of. So you have 1100 RPM, and every single headshot with a three round burst uh, fire mechanic on the 93R is gonna mean 15% reduced cooldowns every time you land a headshot burst, which is not that hard to do. Uh, for someone like me that has fairly bad aim, it's a little bit more difficult, but for someone with any semblance of good aim, they're gonna be able to recharge their skills whenever they feel like it, primarily their heal. 
So now moving on to my actual skills, I'll look at my character sheet, I'll talk about my talents, etc. Uh, you're going to be running booster shot uh, heal as well as, of course, the assault shield mod on your riot shield. Equips a shield that grants the user's weapon increased damage, knockback, accuracy, and faster reload speed. This is great. It means more damage output uh, while still having that protection in front of you. Uh, and you can stagger NPCs, which I'll show in the gameplay. Very, very valuable. Now, depending on what you want to play with, you can go tactical link for offensive capabilities. You can go recovery link for defensive capabilities. But I would advise something like tack link because you have plenty of healing. You don't really need recovery link unless you're with a squad and want to revive them. Uh, but tack link just means more damage faster. Uh, and it's really fun, you know, style of play to, to, to go through and play on. So moving on to your talents, you have on the move. Uh, this is very, very important and critical save. Those are the two non-negotiable talents that you're not going to switch out. Outside of that, you have uh, tactical advance, which I actually would not advise running with this build. However, it is a very effective talent and a lot of people are very attached to it. So you can run that. But with this build in particular, it's important to run precision because you are not going to have a pulse of your own. You have a heal and a shield, you don't have a pulse. So precision is actually going to raise your damage output by a significant chunk because it pulses them for 10 seconds of the base pulse critical hit chance and uh, critical hit damage modifiers for 10 seconds, which means higher damage. And it's very easy to land the headshots. You're gonna be aiming exclusively for the head anyways. You can also switch out one is none if you're confident in your ability to land just those headshots, or you can leave on strike back. Uh, I'll switch over to one is none for these purposes, um, but strike back is good as well for achieving faster heals. You know, getting that 20% in addition to the 15% every time you land a headshot burst with your pistol is gonna be very, very strong. So moving on to my actual character sheet, just to make sure that everybody has seen everything that they want to. I have hybrid nature across the board, um, high 4000s across the board. We have 4,800 firearms, uh, 4,900 stamina, and 4,700 electronics. That's pr about as even as you can get. Moving on to combat, I don't really have any bonuses there that are worth noting except for the 9% damage to elites. Then in my skills, I actually have 15% skill haste, which is helpful, quite helpful. And signature ability resource gain is 14%, which is really nice because I'm going to be aiming for the head exclusively anyways. And every headshot, uh, regardless of whether or not you have skilled on the weapon, will still regenerate a portion of the signature ability resource, which means that you're going to be getting only kills that then help you recharge your signature, which means uh, faster attack links or more medical wing signatures. Moving on, we have max health, that's a decent health pool. And then armor, we only have 43.95% mitigation. Now, some people are gonna turn their nose up at this and say that's a horrible build, you're not very tanky. Well, they're flat out wrong. Uh, it doesn't really matter what your weapon mitigation is because you can tank all the incoming damage from the front uh, without a hassle. Now, that being said, in PvP, this build excels in 1v1 scenarios. If you are fighting one enemy agent, I have never lost a 1v1 with this build. I can heal through everything that they can do to me. My shield never goes down because they're incapable of dealing enough damage fast enough, especially if they face trade because then I land headshots. And as soon as I get them low and proc expert for 100% increased damage while they're below 30% health, I can actually drop them before they even realize what's happening and can pop a heal. I don't have any PvP footage for you, but again, in our live streams, there's a ton of stuff surrounding these builds. Uh, so check those out in the Twitch live streams full video channel. Uh, playlist on our channel. Moving on uh, for the, the last pieces of the character sheet, regardless of whether or not there's anything interesting there, I'll show them for people that want to see. And now I'm going to kick it over to some gameplay and talk about why I'm doing the things that I'm doing and demonstrate the build in action. Right before I do though, just to make sure that you guys see how efficient the 93R with Cool Headed can be, I'm going to pull out the Assault Shield, I'm going to pop my heal really quickly, and now I'm just going to show you how fast you can recharge your heal. It's already back and before it's done, there we go, I can pop it again. I can just keep recharging my heal and keep popping on the ground. Uh, I am personally popping it right now because I'm in the firing range, but you are capable of shooting it on the ground from behind your shield across the map if you need to. You can run something like Defibrillator if you want to constantly be able to revive your downed teammates in incursions from, from range. Uh, the build has like so much going. potential, it's kind of unreal. So you pop a booster again, and then I can instantly recharge it. This also allows me to, if for whatever reason I end up dropping my assault shield, I can pretty much instantly recharge my assault shield. Another thing to note is that the assault shield gives bonus stability to your weapon, and with this gun, it's very difficult to keep it on target if you don't have any stability. Uh, what the assault shield does is allow you to keep it on target and get more procs of cool headed and just recharge your signature very, very fast. Uh, one is none helps with this process, so does precision. I'm gonna have drastically increased damage uh, to pretty much every target that I face. So I'm gonna kick it over some gameplay now and talk about the mechanics. So I'm going to be killing some bosses in the open world, starting with the Bullet King, and just demonstrating how often you can pop your heal 
uh, how much damage you can soak and mitigate by keeping the shield between you and the enemies. And essentially the invulnerability of the build when used properly, especially in a PvE context. Uh, in PvP it's a little bit different because enemies aren't going to stay this stagnant. They're going to actually roam around you, try and flank you. Uh, in one versus one scenario though, like what I'm demonstrating here with this Bullet King, just imagine that he's running in circles around you. All you have to do is just keep the shield between you and him and he can't do any damage. And the same is true of enemy players. Uh, you can fire your heal on the ground for teammates and you can recharge it insanely quickly. Uh, there's so much potential with this build. Tanking is a legitimate thing now in 1.5. It already was in 1.4, um, but tanking has become something that is really going to be critical to achieving uh, and completing some of these harder incursions, some of this more difficult content with a lot more NPCs that hit harder. Uh, as you can see here, I am face tanking a flamethrower. It does mitigate the damage from the flamethrower. If I do want to have offensive capabilities, I can then pop my tactical link. I can do tons of damage very quickly using my decisive gloves, uh, and I can just face tank this boss indefinitely and just keep healing up my shield to max health uh, through the, the backpack talent of Resourceful. It's very, very strong. Uh, I think that this build, in terms of tanking efficiency, is top tier, and it will be used by a lot of players to allow them to complete the hardest content in the game uh, a lot earlier than they should be able to. Now, let's say patch 1.5 drops and everybody wants to gear up well you want to go to world tier 5 first of all and then you want to start to complete the harder content faster uh, and a tanking build such as this is going to allow you and your squad to do just that it also has a lot of utility in the dark zone uh, despite the fact that players are a lot more sporadic than npcs you can still land headshots if you have better aim than i do and while you're landing those headshots you're popping booster shot more often and your pistol damage is relevant you can actually kill enemy players with this pistol damage especially because of the high rpm uh, it's very difficult for anyone in a 1v1 scenario to kill you, and as soon as you're in a squad versus you scenario, anything like 4v1 or 3v1, they will flank you and probably kill you, uh, but if you have a team to, to support you, or if you're in any way keeping them at a choke point, uh, and you're able to hold them back there, it's very, very easy to survive, and this build is a lot more tanky than it would lead you to believe, looking at the toughness. Uh, the Ballistic Shield is a very fun skill now. It does glitch from time to time. It's important to notice when that happens. When you start to take damage right through the shield, as if it weren't there, uh, you will see that, you know, you have to get rid of the shield, uh, reuse the skill, and then you'll be able to tank again. But when it does work properly, it's a really fun thing to, to take advantage of. Now, as you can see, I'm just standing right in front of this maxed out level 34 LMG user, this heavy. Uh, and he's just dishing damage into me nonstop. I can heal my, my shield faster than he can deal damage. I can choose when to shoot him, when not to, to make sure that I have my heal off of cooldown. Uh, it's a very, very efficient build. Um, it's something that I will be using in my squad when 1.5 drops to gear up insanely fast. I will be using it in the dark zone to try and support my teammates, make sure I have booster shots on the ground at all times, uh, and then mitigate a ton of the enemy team's damage by blocking these bullets. It's something I'm really excited about. I, hopefully there was a lot of gameplay here to showcase what it can do. And as always, guys, if you want to support the channel, please check out the links below and have a nice night.